Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at the sub decrease command, which is new in Rhino 8. So, what are sub decreases? Well, essentially, the sub decrease command allows a variable weighted crease to be applied to sub D edges, and this greatly simplifies the building of geometry, such as this sketch model, where we have some defined edges and swage lines. In Rhino 7, sub D edges are smooth unless we use the crease command to create what we could call a hard or sharp crease. Because the crease is sharp, stopping the crease midway around a continuous edge like this creates an awkward transition. In Rhino 7, if I want to create an edge that assumes a tighter but not sharp condition, I have two options. I can use the insert edge command to create a number of additional edges to create a tighter transition or I can start with an existing sharp edge and use the bevel command to soften this off. Both of these methods add complexity to the sub D form. Moreover, transitioning from a tight corner to a softer one, for example along this top edge, requires careful control of the surrounding topology in order not to deform the overall shape. And this is often time consuming. In Rhino 8, I can use the new sub D crease command to set either a variable or constant weighted crease to the edge. The range is between 0, which is uncreased, and 100%, which is the maximum value, but which still produces a soft crease. Sub D weighted creases are never sharp. Here I'll set a constant value of 80% and you can see that this creates a much more defined edge without making any changes to the underlying sub D topology. Similarly, I can add a variable weight to this edge by setting a value at any of the highlighted points. So here I'll set a value of 100% and let this wash away to zero at the opposing side. Again, the result looks very good with the environment map on and there's no change to the sub D topology. As well as the obvious benefits at design and modeling time, because the topology remains simple along the weighted creased edges, if I convert to NURBS, I'll retain a simple patch layout in the resulting poly surface. If I want to apply a sharp crease with the new sub D crease command, then the crease all command line option does this. In some cases, however, I may still need the existing crease command. An example of this might be where I want to maintain a sharp corner of a sub D surface as displayed in smooth mode. The icon for this crease command is still in mesh tools and here I can apply this to a corner vertex. To clarify the typing options, then it's sub D crease to apply the new weighted creases to edges and crease to apply a sharp crease to edges or corner vertices. Now let's look at an example of using sub D creases in context. This is a model that we use in our Simply Rhino level 2 training classes to explore sub D topology. It's a fairly basic model of an automotive form with a simple, predominantly four-sided layout and has symmetry applied along the center line. If I want to add definition to the rear, then I could select these edges and use the older crease command to give me an idea about how I could define this rear panel. To see this a little better, I'm going to switch to my surface evaluation viewport mode. This is a custom display mode that I'll explain later in the video. Clearly, we have a very blatant hard or sharp crease here. And if I remove this and replace this with the new sub D crease, I can achieve a more subtle transition. So here, I'll choose a constant weight of 80%. The real value of weighted creases in an example like this is, I think, that there's much more scope to play with these features without changing the topology. So if I want to soften the crease at the outer edges, I can reselect the edges and go back into the sub D command. 
I'll now soften this crease as it moves outwards by adding a value of 30% at this point here. So in other words, we'll get a fade out from 80% to 30% along this edge. And I'll do the same on the lower edge. There's now a noticeable difference. If I'm constantly iterating with these edges, then I can use named selections rather than having to keep selecting the edges again and again. The interface for the panels has changed in Rhino 8 and now I navigate to the right hand toolbar, select the gear icon and show panels. From here I can choose to show name selections and then save the selected edges as rear. So let's go back into the sub decrease command and set the lower part of the crease to zero so that the crease just washes away from the top center, over the top edge and around the corner. This looks good too. So very quickly I've created three styling variations without changing the sub D topology. Now of course later on when I've become more decisive about the shape I can add some edges to further define the crease and I'll look at this approach later. Let's now look at the transition between the glass canopy and the body. At the moment, particularly around the base of the windscreen, there isn't much definition. And I want to improve this, but not at the expense of having a noticeable crease. I'll select the relevant edges and save these as a named selection. Then I'll go into sub decrease and start with a constant weight of 60%. Notice how this really pulls the shape inwards, giving the improved definition without a noticeable crease. If we look at a before and after, the effect is subtle but noticeable, and this is achieved without changing the topology of the model. Next, if I want to increase the definition along the body side, from the A pillar rearwards, I can go back into the sub decrease command and increase the value to, for example, 100% between these two points. And this will increase the definition locally. We can now see this much sharper transition at the base of the side glass. At the moment, the model has sharp creases around the wheel arch. And if we go into the environment map, we can see that where this crease terminates, there's an uncontrolled problem area. And this is perhaps a better view. A more correct solution here would be to select all of that creased edge and replace this with a weighted crease. If I start by putting a 90% constraint at the top and then a 90% here and also here, what I can then do is have a fairly tight crease most of the way around the wheel arch and then run this out to zero at the first and last edge segment. This promises to look much better and when I apply the environment map we can see that we now have a much more controlled result. Let's now look at adding these character lines along here and this should be pretty straightforward to do. This is the form without the added creases and I'll start at the front and look at adding a crease that washes away to zero at the wheel arch. I'll select these three edges and apply a weighted crease to them. I'm going to start at 60% at this point and then reduce this gradually to 40% here, 20% here and zero at this point. And this looks fine for now. Looking at the side swage line, I'm going to select these edges and add a constant weight sub decrease of 100%. Because I have an uncreased edge at the start and the end of the crease, then I think this should blend out smoothly enough, certainly at least for a concept model. So the result of these creases is that we've now got a more defined delineation of the form. 
One of the things that becomes important once we have these more defined features in our model is that we really need to start to consider the rectangular topology of our sub D form and make this as regular as possible. And as you can see here, there's quite a lot of variances. So aligning some of the vertices will help to make the smooth creases look much more precise. So I'll do this off camera before we get onto the next stage. I've now done some point alignment and on the assumption that I'm more settled on the design now and the next thing I want to do is to sharpen up some of the transitions, I've now added some edges and made some minor changes to the topology. I've made sure, for example, that all the lower faces of the canopy above the crease are four-sided. In the case of the canopy here, I've added this edge just above the crease. Zooming into the side, this edge is the crease and this is part of the new edge that I've added. If I turn on the gumball and set the alignment to object, then I can move the highlighted edges inwards to accentuate the crease slightly. And of course, this works by locally changing the surface direction. I only need a very slight movement here and I can go around the canopy making similar adjustments. Once finished, the transition between the glass and the body is much more defined. Now, of course, this is a little bit too exaggerated, but I've done this just to show the process. The swage line can be accentuated too, and I find that in examples like this, there's more value in moving the edge adjacent to the crease rather than the crease itself. Looking from the rear three quarters, there's a bit of a wobble on the canopy edge, and this can probably improve by aligning some vertices. To do this, I'll switch to the boxy or flat mode, select the required points on the creased edge, and run a line from the transform menu, and then choose the two line command line option. I'll then repeat this for the edge above the crease and the result now looks slightly better. Now of course I could go on tweaking this shape for some time but I've probably gone far enough for now. But before I finish I did say I'd show how I created the custom display mode that I've called surface evaluation. I'll start by making a copy of the shaded display mode. So I'll open up Rhino Options and then go into View and open Display Modes. I'll select Shaded and then Copy. This will open up the settings for our new display mode and I'll rename this Demo before moving on to change the necessary settings. I'll start with the background and change this to Gradient to Color and then the two colors can be set here. Of course this is a personal choice. Next, I'll turn on the ground plane and set this to shadow only before going to color and material usage. And this is where I'm going to make the biggest change. I'm going to change custom materials settings in the environment setting. Here, I'm going to choose a PNG image like this. Looking at this image in Photoshop, you can see that this is a blurred version of a commercial spherically mapped HDR image. You can find similar images online, just be sure to convert this from an HDR or EXR to a PNG or similar. I'll then set the environment multiplier to 100%. Next I'll set the gloss intensity, gloss finish and reflectivity to around 90-95% to and then select OK to close the palette. Finally, I'll set the lighting scheme to Scene Lighting and select Advanced GPU Lighting. And then navigate to Shadows and turn them on before selecting OK to close the Rhino options. Now, if I change the display mode to my new demo mode, I'll see the result. If you're not seeing the ground plane or shadows, then make sure that these are not turned off in the display panel. So, that's about the end of what I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments below.
If you found this video useful, then please hit the like button. And remember that to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino, you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino, we offer training for Rhino and all its key plugins, so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.